against LaSalle. Once again, the final score, 65-58. Corey Robinson, this is Jason Knapp saying so long. Let's get you out to Dayton and UNC Asheville. The UD Arena in Dayton, Ohio, where it's the second game of our Atlantic 10 doubleheader. The Bulldogs from the University of North Carolina, Asheville, taking a seven-hour bus ride for this non-conference matchup with the Dayton Flyers. Steve Schlanger, Tim McCormick, almost five minutes gone by first half. Dayton with the early lead up by seven here over the Bulldogs and running the floor. Looking for their first three-point basket. The scramble here. They'll get another crack at it. This is to Ron Holmes. Preseason All-A-10 first-team selection. Was the Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Year a season ago. And an empty trip for the Flyers, but they had a 6-0 run earlier in the first four minutes that have helped them break out to this seven-point lead, Tim. An exceptional start by Dayton. They've scored eight points in the paint. So far, Asheville doesn't even have a bucket. And an air ball now. Asheville, a team that can really fill it up, but struggling to score here today. As Holmes gets blocked, takes it back up, and it's Pember who cleans the glass. It's an Asheville team that likes to run, get out in transition, but they can't use it to the full effect because they're not knocking down their shots offensively. Dayton has such a massive advantage in size. Their starting lineup averages 6'8". They have NBA-sized front lines. Here's Kobe Brea coming up short and coming back from illness and injuries for several games this season. And the backcourt altogether for Dayton has been decimated by injuries. Their top three guards have been out at various points. But for Asheville, they are now 0 of 9 from the field. What else do you look for in this matchup early on, Tim, that can set the tone and provide a, a barometer for the entire game? It's a good question. It's easy to answer because Asheville loves to press and force turnovers. Dayton has struggled with point with without their point guard, Malachi Smith. Remember, this Dayton squad, preseason favorites in the A-10. They've got three really good guards. All three of them have been injured and have not played full seasons. UNC Asheville has won three of their last four. And coming off a 52-point win on Wednesday over a Division III school, Warren Wilson, back home in North Carolina. Can't buy one here, though. And finally, Jaymon Battle. Gets the basket underneath, but the Flyers trying to answer right back with R.J. Blakeney with the and one. A beautiful recognition by Sharon Johnson. What a huge success story. He's six foot eight as a freshman, and he told me before the game, yeah, we know that Asheville is going to press. I learned from my older brother, his name is Star that you can break a press easier by passing it than you can dribbling. Why? Because a pass can get there much, much quicker. Great recognition by Sharon Jobs. Great delivery. And now Blakeney, the redshirt sophomore from Baltimore, a New England player of the year in high school, shooting 80% from the free throw line so far this season. And the team's top defender at the free throw line. And just over 13 minutes now left to go in the first half. So both both of the big guys for Dayton make up the top power position tandem in the A-10. Talk about Holmes and Kamara. They will always leave one of them in to make sure they've got the shot blocking in the paint. And that's been a huge problem so far for Asheville. Jamon Battle back-to-back -back field goals for the guy they call Doc. A nickname he picked up back in fifth grade because of an oversized football helmet. <laughs> doesn't make much sense. I don't understand that. He admits it. It really doesn't have much logic to it, but for some reason it's stuck all these years. His coaches, his parents, even his friends. It, it sounds like he made that story up. <laughs> Should have come up with a better one. In any case, he's got their last four points. 
Trying to provide the assist here for Trent Stephanie, but the three pops out. Amadou Silla got the rebound, the three from straight away. And the struggles continue for Asheville. And not getting back on defense. That has cost them here. And a second opportunity for the Flyers here. This time Charles Johns has it poked away out of bounds. And a timeout on the floor. Just inside of a dozen minutes left to go. First half and Dayton by six. When you get a chip in your windshield, the lethal post perimeter game. Both of these big guys are on the NBA radar, and I, I really expect a fantastic matchup for both of them. The big issue for Asheville at the moment is their field goal percentage. They're 2 of 15 from the field, and maybe more noticeably, 0 of 7 from three-point range. This is a team that is top 10 in the nation from downtown at 41% from beyond the arc this season, but still looking for their first triple here today. Three on the shot clock, and the corner three falls. That's our first three-point basket of the day. Brady Yule, the redshirt sophomore from right here in Dayton, Ohio. And Drew Pember is not on the court, and that's a problem for Asheville. He averages 21 points per game, one of the best centers in the conference. Battle had it stripped by Kamara. Dayton looking to add to this sizable first-half lead. Flyers coming off. A disastrous loss at Virginia Tech on Wednesday as Kamara lays it up and in. It was their most lopsided defeat in seven years. They lost by 28 points at Tech. Shot just 30% from the field, 20% from three-point range, and trying to get back on track here on their home floor today. It was horrific defense. I call it virtual defense. It wasn't really there. I think that Virginia Tech is absolutely loaded, though. That's a tough matchup. They've already beaten North Carolina this year. The Hokies with only one loss on the season to this point. Some miscommunication. Kamara throwing it away. And Brady Yule getting things started from downtown with the assist from Kamara. Kamara is so versatile. He's an elite rebounder. He can play in the top of the zone. One of the A-10's best defensive players. He's the what they call the Swiss Army knife out there. And he also is capable of big plays on the defensive end. Now coming in. One of the other collective narratives was the Asheville offense against the Dayton defense as UNC finally connects with their first triple. Fletcher A.B. hits it from the corner. Asheville averaging 84 points a season. That's 20 more points a game than Dayton, but taking on a flyer defense that's the top defensive side in the A-10 conference. So you have a top 10 offense nationally from Asheville against the conference's leading defense from the A-10. What's going to give? Well, well, both of these teams are really good defensively. They just do it in different ways. Asheville needs to score buckets so they can set up their full court pressure. That gets the speed game going. Now, when you look at Dayton's numbers, you'd say, wow, they, they want a defensive slugfest in the 60s. That's not true. They've just struggled to generate points because Malachi Smith, Kobe Brea, and Kobe Elvis are their playmakers on the perimeter. They're hurt, they're not 100%, and that puts a lot of pressure on the flyer big man. Kamara, the junior from Brussels. The transfer from Georgia, leading the A-10 in rebounding at this point in the season as we go over the midpoint of the first half of play. Dayton by nine. The defense on Pember has been astounding so far. He's had no good looks at the basket. They share the job and not afraid to switch one through five. This Asheville team coming from the Big South Conference, returning three starters from last year's side. Picked to finish third in their conference this season. Steve, I can't get over this crowd. Sellout after sellout. The whole season is sold out here at the UD Arena. Battle flying in, and he's got half a dozen points. 
Yeah, I really thought that Asheville would be going to their 2-2-1 full court pressure. They have not. Part of the reason is Dayton is getting the ball out of the basket so quick and getting up the court. Short on the left hand hook, but Deron Holmes is going to get his own miss and the end one as well. Just tenacious on the glass. The sophomore from Arizona goes back to the free throw line. And what they're looking for is Deron Holmes on the offensive glass. Remember, Drew Pember is a really good shot blocker. The challenge for Asheville is that there's nobody else that's going to be able to help out Pember on the glass. Steve, I find it interesting. Shot blockers like Pember are so worried about changing shots. They're not very good at blocking out. That's why you saw Holmes on the glass. Big offensive board by Kamara off the Holmes free throw miss. Shot clock at single digits. Holmes just too much inside right now for this Asheville team. Deron Holmes, the Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Year a season ago, and the first freshman in school history to be named Team MVP here at Dayton as well. You know who's watching him closely is the NBA. What the scouts love is his lateral quickness. Turnover by the Flyers. That's been a liability for them this season, taking care of the basketball. One of the elements they'd like to clean up. Pember sizing up a three, and he hits his first of the day. Drew Pember, the Big South Defensive Player of the Year a season ago, preseason Player of the Year this season in the Big South Conference, but he has been smothered by the Flyers on the offensive end of the floor. Yeah, and it's been Mustafa Amsil defensively. He's done a great job. No airspace at all for Pember. The lead is eight. Shot clock at eight for the Flyers. It's going to be Blakeney from the corner. And see who's going to make a shot from the perimeter for Dayton. But when you go there, you don't need any jump shots. Sloppy exit pass from Pember. Stolen by Blakeney. Holmes on the finish. And those are points you just can't give away if you're a team like Asheville trying to come back on the road. Hostile environment. UNC Asheville, 6-3 and three on the season. Trying to integrate six newcomers into the lineup this year as well. Doc Battle on the miss. Jones, a rare offensive rebound, though, for Asheville here. A lot of motion principles by the Bulldogs offensively. Pember blocked by Holmes. Battle flying in. And a whistle. And a foul here. Timeout on the floor with just north of six minutes left to go in the first half. Pember, top three-point shooter on the squad, finally gets going with his first here on the road. But Holmes has been a monster inside. When you get a chip in your windshield, trust Safelite. This couple was headed to the farmer's market when they got it. Because of so many absences here, 10 games deep into the year. And really a, a brutal schedule in the battle for the Bahamas. A one-point loss to Wisconsin in a low-scoring affair. An overtime thriller that they lost to BYU. NC State took care of business. And then the 28-point blowout at Virginia Tech. I, I still think that if you're looking at the A-10, St. Louis and Dayton are the teams with the most talent and upside. The top three guards for Dayton that have been injured or missed time because of illnesses have together collectively missed a total of 16 games. And those five returning starters from last year have only played together on four different occasions among the 10 games they've played overall so far this season. So trying to find that continuity, that rhythm and flow that this Flyer team is known for. Yeah, and make no mistake about it, Malachi Smith is the heartbeat of this team. Boy, Holmes, a big rejection on the other end. Ash 
Knoxville looking for something to serve as a springboard to get their offense jump started. Shooting just 20% from the field. Trent Stephanie getting to the glass, but lost out and over to the Flyers. How about this block, though, on Holmes? Well, when you're driving to the basket against Asheville, the first thing that you say is, where's number four? He's one of the best shot blockers in college basketball. Then you start to worry about the rim. There is great rim protection by both of these teams at both ends of the court. Rod Holmes coming up on a double-double here in the first half. Has nine points, ten rebounds. It would be his fifth consecutive game with a double-double overall. And Holmes has more rebounds right now by himself than the Asheville team does collectively. They just cannot find an answer for him inside. Asheville getting destroyed in the paint. And it's an over and back. And a turnover for this Asheville squad. Third turnover in this first half. That has five minutes left to play and a double-digit lead for the home team. And look at the size of this lineup for Dayton. Shortest guy, six foot six. And Tim, that's something that they were frustrated about in their loss at Virginia Tech on Wednesday. They felt they didn't use their length to deflect passes get in those passing lanes, disrupt the Hokies' offense. They didn't use their length or their height to their advantage. And when you look at Dayton, you know, even though they return more players than anybody else in the A-10, they're still one of the youngest teams. This, this is a team with sky-high expectations. 24 wins last year. I think they were the first team out of the NCAA tournament. 90% of their scoring returns. tradition here, but this is a Dayton team that has not been to the NCAA tournament since 2017. They would have been a number one seed, but for the COVID year that canceled the tournament. But they have the system, the structure, and the resources in place here with Anthony Grant, the alum, now in his sixth year to really continue this tradition here in Dayton. R.J. Blakeney at the line is a key player right now. When I watch defensively, Asheville's not going to leave the paint because there's just no respect for the Flyers' perimeter shooting. R.J. Blakeney does his best work on the defensive end of the court, a good complimentary guy that can cover one through four. 6-6, six, six. Baltimore tough. His mom was a player at Maryland, also played professionally over in Europe. So it's in the DNA for R.J. Blakely. And Dayton enhancing their margin here. I've counted five different defenders now on Drew Pember. Everybody gets a piece. This is Nick McMullen way off on the three. Now, I'm not sure that I've seen a half of basketball with so many air balls from one team. And there's no question about it, the length of Dayton is causing a lot of problems. You can't overstate it, as Asheville is now 2 of 13 from downtown. A team that on the season is 41% from three, and that's a top 10 figure nationally. So much of their offense comes from the three-point shot, but they just can't hit one now here in Dayton. Meanwhile, Holmes is having his way, getting to the basket whenever he wants. As we drop just out the four minutes left to go. First half in Dayton, and it's all Flyers here at home. At the unit. Holmes in the NBA someday. Right now, Steve, I would say he's targeted mid-second round. But when you look at his length, lateral quickness, and how hard he runs the court, he's got first-round potential. And there's the double-double. Ten points, ten rebounds. And still, 2.41 left to go in the first half of play. H have you seen a 20-20 game in college in quite a while? I, I it's been some time. I can't think back I'm, to one. I'm thinking like Blake Griffin maybe, going back that far. And this is also the largest lead of the day for the Flyers. 
a 14-point advantage. They have doubled up the Bulldogs from Asheville here. Do you think that Anthony Grant talked about their lack of defense against Virginia Tech? Because they're playing like their pants are on fire right now. A-plus defense. Mike Sharp jumps. First ever native of Mongolia to get a Division I athletic scholarship. Crazy to think his dad was a globetrotter at seven feet tall. And the first Asian globetrotter. And that's why Mike was born in Phoenix, played prep ball here in the U.S. And with the shot clock at one, Holmes able to get his hand on the rebound off the miss for an Umzeal. But in the end, the Flyers turn it over. And just inside of three to go. I asked Mike, what what did you learn from your dad? Any cool tricks with the basketball, being a globetrotter and everything? He said he knows how to spin a ball on his finger. That's about it. <laughs> and there is his father with the hat on in the background. Sharp Johns went to high school near here in Dayton. Also spent some time at a prep school in Napa, California. Born in Phoenix and... Of course, the first citizen from Mongolia to ever get a scholarship in any sport, not just basketball. Do you think he ever met Meadowlark Lemon? I think it'd probably be a good chance. Well, his father was actually found by Dale Brown during a tour of Asia. As the corner three comes up short here, and it's Kamara with the rebound. Dale Brown discovered his father, but by then his father was too old to play college and wasn't really going to be a fit for the NBA, but that's how he got on the radar of some prominent people. And then, of course, his son is born in Phoenix and rises through the ranks, and now here he is playing Division I college basketball in a pretty recognizable program. Well, Dale Brown also found a guy named Shaquille O'Neal. Yes, he did. That's not even fair. Did you? My goodness, the length on that block shot. Holmes. And then he gets the payoff on the other end. So Holmes, who last year set a school record for blocks in a season with 81, gets one here that leads to a dunk for him on the other end as well. Deron Holmes into double figures, leading. Flyers in the midst of a 10-0 run. 32-14 is the lead here with 141 left to go in the first frame. As Dayton tries to climb above the 500 mark on the season here. With conference play in the A-10 now coming up soon. This Asheville team is really good shooting team from the perimeter. This season, they average 28 points per game from three, shooting over 40%. They can't get a clean look. Look at all of toes on the line for Dayton defensively. Tejon Jones, their leading three-point shooter, has to go into the paint before he finally gets his first basket of the day. What else can they do? What are you seeing that might allow Asheville an avenue back into this game offensively? Well, remember, with Malachi Smith out, you've got a 6'8 freshman point guard. I think Asheville's making a mistake by not trying to get out there in full court press. Remember, this Dayton team is a little bit careless with the ball at times. Under a minute to go, first half. They're trying to get it over the top to Kamara. Deflected and a rare flyer turnover. But then Trent Stephanie loses it on the other end. Blakeney leading the charge and the finish once again by Deron Holmes. He's living above the rim. You know, Holmes' sprinting speed is awe inspiring. You are not going to believe when we show you the replay of how he outran the guards for Asheville and beat them down the court to get that dunk. Deron Holmes has over twice as many points as any other player here on the floor today. 15. As we wind down the first half, Nashville looking for the last shot. Tejon Jones finally gets his first triple, their leading three-point shooter in the final seconds. And then Amzil, the leading three-point man for the Flyers, misses at the buzzer. But a first 20 minutes dominated by the home side. And watch there, you see Holmes. He outruns all of the guards to get the dunk. 
And I understand Blakeney, he's saying, look, if my big man is going to run 94 feet, I'm going to give him the reward. He gets a dunk for his efforts. All right, so halftime here in Dayton. The Flyers over the Bulls. 18 points and 11 rebounds. Holmes and Kamara outscored them by themselves. And Tumani Kamara missed practice yesterday because of a bout with the flu. He wanted to come to practice, FaceTime the coaches. One of the trainers made him actually take his temperature while on FaceTime. He said, I want to see you do it. I want to see what it is. Still had a fever. Would not let him come. Made it to shoot around this morning and now back to 100% for the game here this afternoon. Meantime, on the other end, if you're Mike Morrell, the head coach for Asheville, what was the message to the team at the locker room to try and restore confidence and get back in this game yeah, I think that Mike Morrell probably sent the same message that Anthony Grant sent to his team after after the Virginia Tech debacle earlier this week you know an angry team will play better defense and I do think that high energy shows up most on the defensive end of the court that was a good first sequence by the Bulldogs trying to get to the paint but they've got to just make shots both free throws and perimeter shooting this Asheville team averaging 20 more points per game than Dayton this season, but trailing by 15 starting the second half here today. Here's a shocking number. In their wins, Asheville averages 91 points per game. In their losses, 69. And they're not a good come from behind team. You go back over the course of the last two seasons, they are only 1 in 14 when trailing at the break. And down by a big margin at halftime here today in a hostile environment. Some 13,000 at the UD Arena in Dayton, Ohio. Three to shoot here. Amziel overjumped his shot attempt as he went for the rebound. He's one player who hasn't quite gotten started. He's their leading three-point shooter, but kind of a up and down first half for him today. Yeah, there's a lot to like about this offense for Nashville. And as a foul is called here on the Flyers. You're noticing the adjustment though. Mike Morrell has his guys going to the rim. And it makes sense because Dayton has extended their defense so far. That's the reason that the Bulldogs can't get open threes. Now they're attacking the paint. The problem is you've got Kamara and you've got Holmes protecting the rim. Nick McMullen at the free throw line, the junior from Greensboro. Transfer from Murray State, where he was the Ohio Valley Conference first team selection. Won a game with them in the NCAA tournament. Big physical presence. Hasn't been able to use that to much effect here today, though, against an equally powerful Dayton squad. Yeah, and here's the press that we've been looking for. It creates turnovers, but it also has a cumulative effect where it can wear you out over the course of time. Now Amzil finally connects from three. Top three-point shooter on this team at 30. Tejon Jones tries to answer, but it pops out. Blakeney running. Pember tried to get position, but Blakeney finishes through contact. One way to stop a team from pressing is to get a wide open three and a transition layup. The press quickly goes away. Jones spinning. And Holmes has the rebound. How many times have you said that now? Holmes has the rebound. Well, officially, 11. <laughs> He's got the double-double from the first half and trying to build on it here in the second half. Pember against Amzio. Fights through him and finds a way to score. Well, what's it like for a guy like Pember, the Big South preseason player of the year, leader in points, rebounds, so many of the important categories to have a, a day like this where they're ganging up on him. Well, he's played in the SEC at Tennessee, so he, he has seen the highest level of competition. This time got caught in the air, and Kamara in the transition game. Splits defenders on the pass for Amzil. Ash 
Nashville. Winners of three of four coming in. And most recently, the 52-point win at home on Wednesday over Division Three Warren Wilson. It was the most points any Big South team had scored in three years and the most for this Asheville side in over a decade. But I'm wondering, Tim, about playing a Division Three team just days before you go on the road to take on a flyer team like this. It's clearly a different level of competition. Does any impact linger from that game? The length, the, there's no question. It, Warren Wilson does not have the defenders like Holmes and Kamara. If you ask who is Warren Wilson, or, you know their mascot's an owl, so you can say who, right? <laughs> you were waiting to use that, I know. I know, it's bad. <laughs> I apologize. Hey, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> use your A material when you get the chance, though, right? I get it. I didn't want to leave that one in the, you know, in the holster. I wanted to make sure I, I brought that out. Well, it's interesting because it's a local rivalry. The two schools separated by just 10 miles, but it's a, a tough bounce back when you go from Division Three to on the road at Dayton in front of 13,000 fans. A very jarring culture shock. Holmes gets it from over the top. Can you count as many dunks as we've had today and remember seeing this many in a single game as Pember is finishing on the other end for Asheville? And I expect more to come. Holmes against Pember. And can't count that one though. No. Nope. Basket will not count. The foul on Pember. And Dayton picking up where they left off at the end of the first. Get through. So far, Sharov jump with five assists. And he was sharing with me when he was growing up. His older brother, Star, was bigger, and he always made Mike play point guard. At six foot eight as a freshman, you can really see the benefits, man. This guy can pass the ball. Holmes connects on the free throw. Deron Holmes, again, the sophomore from Arizona, highest ranked prospect to ever come to Dayton. Came as a four star. And considering some of the individual talent they've had here, that says a lot. Top 40, right? Yeah. McMullen spins and is able to hit underneath for Asheville. Good backdoor cut by Holmes. Yeah. I was thinking, what play should Dayton run? And I thought, I think they should throw it to Holmes inside. There's no resistance in the paint whatsoever. And this, this is as good as I've seen him play. He's got 20. Doc Battle. Laying it in for Asheville. Yeah, I, I know I threw out that crazy possibility of a 2020 game with his fast start, but he, he's slowly moving up. He may not see enough minutes to be able to get that 2020 number. Traveling violation on the Flyers. As we go back to that last bucket by the sophomore Deron Holmes. A beautiful back cut, bounce pass. The one spot that only his teammate could get it. You know, Steve, I, I've probably worked 10 Dayton games over the years. This is the best defensive effort that I've seen from the Flyers at any point. Well, think about the projection, too, when they start to get some of their injured players back. They can play defense like this. The offense will come around they are once again gonna be a threat to the 810 conference once league play begins in a few weeks yeah very well said I think Dayton and st. Louis are the most talented teams with the highest expectations if they get healthy but I also like the balance at the top Fordham's 10 and 1 Duquesne UMass Davidson all with seven early wins so th there's there's a lot of parity at the top right now in the rank 10 Kobe Brea Thought about creating the space, realized he had enough, and then he buries it from downtown. <laughs> you know who's smiling, and he doesn't smile often during games. Anthony Grant desperately needs somebody to make perimeter shots, and Kobe Brea is the best option. Brea, with just four appearances in ten games after leading the team in three-point shooting a year ago, 
Missed four games because of an injury. He was in the hospital over the summer with a viral infection, so it's been a series of problems for him. But finally getting healthy, not at 100% yet, still working on his conditioning, but rounding into form. Well, Brea's last four games, he has 11 points total, no assists, no free throw attempts. But this is the sign that he's getting better, and the reason that he's so important He's their top perimeter shooter, and he has the ability to play some backup point guard until Malachi Smith gets back. He was the A-10 sixth man of the year last year off the bench. Holmes gets it over the top once again. Seven on the shot clock. Charm drops, and then the follow from Blakeney. was cut off on the baseline. 24-point lead, largest of the game for the Flyers. Seven minutes deep, second half. Holmes went for the block, couldn't connect. Deron Holmes last year, the most blocks in the nation among freshmen. Set a school record at Dayton. I wonder if he's leading the nation this year in blocks by a sophomore. The next year, blocks by a junior. What a day he is having. Sheriff jumps. Misses on the three. Omzeal. Can't hit the follow either. I'm not, I'm not a mind reader, but right now, Mike Morell is saying, man, these guys are good on defense. They're running their offense, they're getting the ball to their spots, but the length has made such a major impact. Now Blakeney, a terrific follow for the redshirt sophomore from Baltimore. Yeah, but what I want you to see is that Asheville is so worried about trying to keep Holmes off the board, they commit three defenders in blockout, and nobody picked up Blakeney. Pember at the free throw line. You know, we're, we're not really seeing the best of Drew Pember. He, he is a, a terrific player. And before the game, I had a chance to talk to him. And, and I said, are, are you better on offense or on defense? And he just smiled and said, I'm really good at both. I love his confidence. By the way, that's a rare miss from him. He had made 31 consecutive free throws going back several games before that miss right there. He leads all of Division I college basketball and made free throws this season. A wide open corner three. And Kobe Bryant is not going to miss that. Did, did you see Anthony Grant pump his fist? That guy does not show a lot of emotion and happiness during game. That made him smile. Now they've had the collective feeling around here that whatever could have gone wrong has gone wrong. Getting a guy like that healthy again, what a big relief for Anthony Grant. The game's not over yet. We have everything to change this game. We have the will, the desire. They're making Asheville commit, and now all of a sudden, the aerial attack is wide open. Four for six from three. And, Steve, during the last time out, after Kobe Bryant made that three, he ran back to the bench. Anthony Grant met him with a huge smile on his face. Sometimes when you're missing shots, it can really weigh on your mind. Anthony Grant, such a popular head coach here in his sixth year, a former national coach of the year, and just the second graduate of this school to coach here at his alma mater. The other one was Grant's coach, Don Donaher, as Anthony was a player here back in the mid-80s and after stops at Alabama, VCU, and the NBA at OKC. He's now back here in his sixth season coaching at Dayton. 11 and a half left to go in this first ever meeting between these two schools. Although Asheville has played in this building before and they're undefeated up until this point. They won two games in the play-in portion of the NCAA tournament over a decade ago. So they have experience here at UD Arena, but this is not going to be an experience today that they're going to really want to remember. Yep. 
Mike Morrell is a, a really good coach, and he has a neat history. He played at Milligan College, which I had never heard of. It's in East Tennessee, NAIA. He said, I was at the lowest level as a player, but I just loved the game so much that it was a great opportunity for me to make friends and learn how to coach. And he's from Elizabethton, Tennessee, just 70 miles north of Asheville, where he's coaching in his fifth season. The two guys with local ties coaching here this afternoon against one another as Doc Battle spins but misses. Well, just too much pace, too much power. Well, here's an opportunity for Asheville. With Holmes out of the game, you've got an opportunity to drive and not find as much rim protection. Uh, but here's, here's the bad news. <laughs> He's not out for long. That's a tough play across your body. Really good body control. The, the foul was against the Flyers. Blake Knee and Holmes both coming back in. Deron Holmes with 22 points, 12 rebounds, four blocks so far today. So, since he hasn't done much, you got to improve the stats. He comes back in with half of the second half still to go. Pember with nowhere to go there and has to back it out. Seven to shoot. Stephanie over Kamara. Tough shot, but he banks it in. I like Stephanie. I think he's a good player. Leads them in assists and steals. Big leader on this team. And Kamani Kamara lays it up and in. Second leading score on this Dayton squad. Almost a double-double average of the season as well. And despite suffering with the flu for the last few days, you wouldn't know it the way he has played once again here today. Uh, I say this with all due respect. I feel like Kamara is capable of more than he's delivered so far. I look at him as so versatile. We always know he's going to get work done on the defensive end of the court. He's now scored a thousand career points, and I think that he should be a 12 to 15 point scorer every game. And he's also going to get a lot of open opportunities because opposing defenses are really targeting Holmes. Drew Pember at the free throw line, where he hits them both. Kamara, the preseason second team all 8 10 selection. Both he and Holmes have started every game this season, and that's been crucial to keeping them competitive with so many of the other guards who have been out. Holmes has done enough that he could have forced that shot, and nobody would say anything, would they? Against Pember here. Had him going the wrong way and just spun baseline for the easy lay-in. It has been a show here today. McMullen against a double team. Anybody watching this game is going to come away with the conclusion that the A-10 is a lot better competition than the Big South is. And I think that when you think of Asheville, they're going to have a chance to win their tournament this year. And it's going to be a foul against Asheville. Another thing that, that we've learned is that Pember is a, a terrific shot blocker, but he helps his teammates so much. We've noticed that he is not a great one-on-one -on -one defender as Holmes just left him and spun baseline. Deron Holmes has matched his season high with 24 points now. Twice as many as any other player here in this game today. Double-double in the first half alone. And now 8.50 left to go here in the second half. It's been all flyers in front of this crowd of just about 13,000. Good pre-Christmas gathering at the UD Arena. A venerable building that's been open, open for half a century now. A lot of big games have been played here. And in fact, more NCAA tournament games have been played at this building than any other facility in the country. When I was in college, 
at Michigan. I played a game at Dayton. So that would have been in 1985. The common theme, there were 13,307 people. Yeah. They were really loud, and it was a very good team. It, it's amazing the, the legacy and the culture of this program. Kobe Bryant, another triple. Kobe Bryant now three of six from three-point range. The team hitting 50% from downtown here this afternoon after shooting only 20% from beyond the arc in their last game on Wednesday. Eight minutes to go. Shot clock at five. Pember from the corner. And a shot clock violation for the first time today against UNC Asheville. Now Kobe Brea, the redshirt sophomore from New York, getting healthy and hitting from downtown. Hi. I, I love the school spirit, though. They're the Flyers, and they've got flight attendants and pilots. Not stewards or stewardesses. That's, that's in the past. It's the best blend of Halloween and Christmas attire that I think I've seen. <laughs> I, I, um... I'm impressed that the entire student section is wearing Santa Claus hats. Tis the season. And their team here, stuff in the stocking and then some today on the floor here at the UD Arena. Big lead, under eight, now left to play as the Flyers look to climb above 500 on the season and remain unbeaten here at home as well. I want to see Kobe Bray get more shots. He's really playing well. He's feeling good. And there he is. He's wide open on the weak side. Oh. Almost. Holmes and the pass stolen. It, it looks like Asheville has gone away from their three-point shooting. They were three for 15 in the first half. They've only taken two the entire second half. Well, what do you do? This is a team that is top 10 in the country in three-point shooting coming in, 41%. When that's taken away, do you stick with it, or do you make some kind of an adjustment and a big right turn? Well, we, we did see them try to drive. That hasn't worked, and we just saw a mid-range jumper that went down. That makes sense to me because the defense is pulled out on the court Dayton is covering the three-point line. If you drive all the way, Holmes and Kamar are protecting the rim. The logical choice is shoot that mid-range. UNC Asheville making the seven-hour drive yesterday by bus to get here. Interesting trip. They left school, stopped at Eastern Kentucky to practice in the afternoon. Then when they got to Dayton, drove state, straight to the arena and practiced some more before even checking into their hotel yesterday. And after the game today, they'll drive right back to Asheville and the mountains of Western North Carolina. This is such a good opportunity for Asheville, and I, I applaud Mike Morrell for bringing his squad here. You know, the Big South is a one-bid league. At large, just not an option. So this is a, a, a great growing opportunity for the Bulldogs. John Jones and Holmes couldn't handle. Pember gets the offensive rebound and he scores. Boy, Sharp Johnson is going to be a good player, isn't he? 6'8 freshman, point guard skills. Jamani Kamara once again gets the feed over the top and it's been there all day using their height, using their vision. Finding the big bodies down low. And now Sharab jumps with a block on the defensive end. And he's so good at running the floor and setting up the finish for Holmes. New season high for Duran Holmes. To put things in perspective, 37 points combined by Kamara and Holmes. They've dominated the glass. And I think it's such a smart move to reward your big guy in transition. Think about this, Steve. Big guys have to run the full 94 feet. The guards have it made. They can run top of key to the free throw line. They don't go the whole way. It's tough on the big guys. Spoken like a true big guy. <laughs> hey, 
You guys want to eat too. I get it. <laughs> I would say that Jerron Holmes is one of the fastest big guys end to end in all of college basketball. Good basketball IQ as well. And just as I say that, he gets the pass stolen. The Pembers are pretty good. Option as well when you're talking about basketball IQ and a range of skills he finishes for Asheville Did, did, did we just see Pember with a little finger roll action in transition? It's remarkable how skilled big men are today And I'm gonna tell you right now why they all grew up as eight-year-olds watching Steph Curry handle the ball shoot threes Big guys today have a whole different skill set than big guys of the past and also the skill development. Don't all kids today have their own personal skill development coach? Coaches, trainers, physios, they all have their own entourage, I think it's fair to say. Sharab jumps, didn't really know what to do, kind of got caught in midair. And it's interesting when we talk about the fact that Steph Curry has changed the game. We've been saying that for several years. It's not just that guys want to shoot the deep, long threes, but the way he handles his entire game. And as you mentioned, the skill sets and the way he plays the game, the different passes, the styles, all of that goes into the same equation. And he's so darn likable. Why wouldn't you want to be like Steph Curry? Big guys today want to be like Kevin Durant, too. Closing in on a 30-point lead if they remain at this pace. Coming up on the final four minutes here. There's a deep three. Dean Gerlisek, his first three-point shot of the day. And that's going to be a jump ball on the other end. And just south of four minutes left to go. And the Flyers cruising here in Dayton. Everyone remembers the moment. Trotter in the stands here today. And now one thing that Pops can always hold over the head of his son. A better winning record. <laughs> as he somehow always seemed to pull it out. But his son has to really work for it. And on cue, almost buries the three, but it rims out. Do, do the, the Globetrotters still have an undefeated record? I think they did lose. I think there was a loss somewhere along the way. That team should get fired immediately. <laughs> you, you can't beat the Globetrotters. Coach and roster. A teardown project. Still running the floor here late. Coming up on the final three minutes with a 23-point lead. Now they had two cracks at it. And they'll still hold possession here with 3.16 left to go. I think that Mustafa Amzil is such a luxury item for any coach. So skilled he can play the three and the four. I think four is his natural position. But, but he comes in, and, and he just gets a lot done. In this game today, he's been a good ball mover. Tom Zeal, the Richard sophomore from Helsinki, Finland. Comes from a basketball-minded family. Has three siblings who also play basketball. And Amzil himself played soccer for seven years before turning to basketball full-time. If you're from Finland, you probably know how to skate, right? I would think so at some point in your life. 10 all rookie team selection a year ago very durable player as well Sharp Johns double teamed in the corner still finds Omzeal the Dayton is just bigger at every position <laughs> just demoralizing for Asheville too oh, look at Wokeji like he's your eighth or ninth man he snatches an offensive rebound and dunks on the other side that shows the talent disparity and the length up front it's the top of the backboard and a pair of free throws coming up 
Yeah, some real nice growth for Mike Morell and his Asheville team. Remember, when he took over, the cupboard was bare. Their first win, or their first season, they only had four wins. Second season was 15 wins. And now they're building. They've got an older team. This is his fifth year. And, and you, you have to believe that there's a lot of learning lessons, a lot of breaking down of film. And really, when, when you've been beaten up pretty good, that's when your players are most willing to hear your message. And I think that part of the reason that Dayton has played with such passion today is after the Virginia Tech game, I bet they spent five or six hours looking at the film, looking at lack of effort plays, looking at mental mistakes, looking at shots that they didn't make because they just weren't tough enough or physical enough. That translates into growth. This Dayton team today is so much better than they were a week ago. And Mike Morrell, the head coach of Asheville, will try and recalibrate after this game. And we all know that head coaches take circuitous journeys to get to where they are with Amzo on the back cut and the authoritative finish there. But for Morrell, a real interesting story as you get the basket and the foul here, the three-pointer and the chance for the four-point play coming up. Gabrelsic. That was a real highlight for the Bulldogs right there, a chance for a four-point play. And he's provided a pretty good spark here in the second half. Here's the cut. I'm sealed. Go crazy. Did I see Malachi Smith jumping up and down in his walking boot on the bench? Malachi, man, you're hurt. You're supposed to be resting that thing. Not doctor's orders, I would imagine. I'm sealed. Go crazy. Did I see Malachi Smith jumping up and down in his walking boot on the bench? Malachi, man, you're hurt. You're supposed to be resting that thing. Not doctor's orders, I would imagine. Gabrelsic completes the four-point play. The redshirt freshman from Florida shot almost 50% while in high school from three-point range. It was a very prolific scorer in his high school years. Now down to a minute and a half left to go here, but just to finish the story on Morrell, he actually began his coaching career at King College in nearby Bristol, Tennessee. He was the basketball coach and also the head men's golf coach. So pulled double duty coaching basketball and golf in his early days. Well, isn't it true as the golf coach, you just get to go out and play golf with your players, right? That's a good thing. Why not? Most of these coaches are playing golf in the offseason as well, so... Might as well combine the passion. He was a collegiate golfer himself. But now the focus is full-time basketball. And he has a big job on his hands after today's loss inside the final minute on the road in Dayton. About to fall to 1-3 and three on the road overall. Silas Mason on the miss for Asheville here. And the Flyers just looking to finish with a flourish. About to climb above the 500 mark on the season and remain unbeaten here at home as they are poised to improve to 6-0 here at UD Arena. And the beer just went flying here on press row. I love the fact that you dove in front of me to protect me from the <laughs> splattering of beer. Thank you. You're a good partner. And and when I, when I look at the upcoming schedule, Anthony Grant may not even have to show his team this film because there's not a lot that they can learn from that this has been a 40 minute effort there has been no let up the defense 40 minutes the offense 40 minutes of sharing the ball excellent a plus effort and a whistle here with 12.6 on the clock Asheville by the way I don't know if you realize this Beer City USA is the nickname. They have more breweries per capita in Asheville, which is a, a cool little mountain town. And it's got a great vibe to it, wow. artsy, a lot of culture in different ways. And I just bring that in because we had to save you from the flying beer a moment ago. So why, why, why not we, make the full tie-in? Why don't we set up a date and we can go there and check out <laughs> Asheville? It sounds like the kind of place I would like. Terrific little mountain town in western North Carolina. And off the miss. Maybe time for one more possession here with 7.9 remaining. Well, I'm sending a message to A-10 teams. You better be ready to go because 
Dayton is getting better in a hurry. The preseason favorites in the A-10 are playing some really good defense. A 23-point win as the Flyers beat the Bulldogs. Seven